Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about Typology, which is a French company that makes skincare and makeup products. And they offer a wide variety of products, many of which are specifically designed for a mature and sensitive skin like mine. And I have been using their products for almost two years, and for about two months or so, I just used Typology skincare so I could get a real sense of how my skin did with it. And I did a count today and I have about 21 different products from this company that are still on their website. And in addition, I have five shades of their lip oil, which is one of my favorite lip products in general. So today I will be doing a five minute makeup look using their products and then I will be doing an honest review of all of the products that I have tried. So first, a little bit of information about me. I'm 59 years old, and I have dry and sensitive skin. And I've never had any kind of cosmetic procedures like injections or surgery, and I don't intend to do that. So I am hoping that makeup and skincare products can help me to look a little bit fresher and maybe even a little bit younger. And over the past three years, I have tried more than a thousand makeup products and a thousand skincare products. So I do have a pretty good basis of comparison for everything that I try. And I have found over the years that there are certain ingredients that do always irritate my skin. And I know that those are ingredients that tend to be irritating for other people as well. And so I just don't talk about any of those products here on this channel. So now a little bit of information about Typology. They were launched in 2019 and they really are a totally e-commerce brand or what they call a digital pure player. So they don't sell in stores at all and they are designed to rapidly scale up so that they are selling very large amounts of products but all through e-commerce. So they started out with $10 million in venture capital funds and they originally were sold just in France but since 2021 they have been selling selling in the United States. So they are still shipping the products in boxes from France and I actually get them here in a couple of days when I order. So the founder of this company is a man named Ning Li and he grew up in China but he moved to France when he was in high school and then he went to HEC which is a prominent business school in France and he seems to describe himself as a serial entrepreneur. So he first started in the furniture business which is an internet furniture company called Made.com which shipped mostly I think all over Europe. And this company was founded in 2010 and it uh, became a public company. Two years ago, it would, had grown up to uh, $500 million in revenues per year and employed 650 people. Unfortunately, that company seems to have collapsed and uh, they ran out of cash and they just sold it off for the bargain price of $3 million. So that makes me really wonder how Typology is doing also. So I know that they don't have quite as many lines of products and as many different products as they were saying that they were hoping to when they first launched the company, but it may be that they're doing fine. So when the founders started this company, it seems that they looked at the marketplace and they said that, well, there's a few companies, Procter & Gamble, Lever Brothers, L'Oreal, that are really saturating the marketplace and that they have a high percentage of the volume and the question is whether or not we compete with, can compete with those companies by offering uh, products through e-commerce where we are selling a lot of the products, but that hopefully we are selling products that are more attractive in terms of the ingredients and in terms of the uh, other kinds of issues that more and more cus customers are concerned about. So they don't want to be a small beauty brand. They're really based on the idea that they can uh, jack up in terms of uh, scaling it to a really large brand and the idea is that they want simple lists of ingredients and no dangerous products for either the skin or the environment. So in terms of my own experiences with this company, first to start out with there are very few skincare products that I really do like very much. Most skincare products, even from supposedly good clean companies, do irritate my skin. And even the products that don't irritate my skin, a lot of times I feel like they're not really helping my skin very much and I just don't want to use them. 
But in the case of typology, I do feel like everything that I have purchased from them has been usable by me. So it may or may not be the case that my intention is to repurchase them, but I have felt with all of them that they haven't irritated my skin and that they've been good for my skin and that they're uh, equivalent quality to the better products that I've used from other brands. So one thing that seems to be really important with regard to using this product line is that they have a extended quiz where they ask you some questions about your skin and about your experiences and where you live. So based on your answers, then they put you into what they call a skin typology. And for instance, for me, my skin is said to be deficient in sebum or oil production. I think that is true. And that it also is very sensitive. So after you fill out their quiz, then they do give you some suggestions of some products that you might want to start out with. And then in addition, for every product that's on their website, then they give you an assessment of whether or not they think it would be appropriate for your skin. So my experience with these products, it seems to me to be that these products are not trying to use ingredients that are really innovative and that are, I have not seen in other products, but I do think that they are putting a lot of really quality ingredients into the products and that they are not putting in ingredients that I do consider to be problematic. They are vegan, they are cruelty-free, they're all made in France. Uh, the skincare is at least 80% natural ingredients. Uh, most of the products are 90% natural and then there's one line that they have that is all natural and they say that they prioritize organic ingredients but I have not seen in terms of their ingredient list that they actually say which ingredients are organic and which ones are not. And so in terms of the ingredients that they say that they're trying to exclude, uh, these include what they call CMR, which is carcinogens, mutagens, and ingredients that cause reproductive toxicity, uh, environmental pollutants, uh, animal-derived ingredients, endocrine disruptors, unethical production and cultivation. Uh, they don't say that they're necessarily trying to avoid irritating ingredients. So my own experience is using the products. Uh, when I did use the products uh, pretty much exclusively, this was during the fall. And so I think it would have been a lot more difficult for me to use just these products during the winter months. They tend not to have the really heavier moisturizers that I tend to really rely on during the, the winter months. But I do think that uh, other than that, my skin seemed to do really, really well with them during that time. I kind of missed having fermented ingredients in my products. I, they really are not making uh, any products as far as I could see uh, with fermented ingredients in them. They've introduced one thing now that I think uh, does have a fermented ingredients in it, but it's more of a body type lotion. But other than that, I think that I, I did really well with this line and I wouldn't mind continuing to use those products into the future. Now, one thing that I have noticed about this company is that their prices have gone up a whole lot over the past two years. So when I first started buying from them, I thought that a primary reason that I was interested is because compared to other companies that were offering similar products with similar ingredients, I thought that these prices were considerably lower. And then over the past two years, what seems to have happened with pretty much all of the products in this company is that they will take the ones that are less successful and they will just remove them from the market. And then the ones that are more successful, they will raise the price. So for instance, two years ago when I bought their foundation, it was $26 and now it is $42. So that is a really big price jump. And I think that all of the other products from the company that are doing well, that they have had similar price jumps. So that has been a, a little bit of a game changer for me because in the past I was really interested in this company because I thought that it was a, a good deal for the products that I was getting. And now I don't think it's really that good of a deal, but I do still like the products. So I think if I had done this video a year ago or certainly two years ago, that I would be really highly enthusiastic about it. Now I'm a little bit less enthusiastic, although I, I still do like most 
of the products very much. I think as an American especially that the fact that they will not under any circumstances really take back any products, that is kind of frustrating for me. So I think that you know for a customer that is uh, has very sensitive skin and that is uncertain about the line, uh, if the fact that they're not offering any samples of any kind or small containers and the fact that they are recommending products that are supposed to be good for sensitive skin but if your skin does not react to them well that they won't take them back. I think all of these things, maybe for Europeans they're used to it, but I think for Americans it, it might be frustrating. So in general I still think this is one of my favorite skincare products companies and I also do really like their makeup products. I do think that they are, particularly if you're looking for a, an almost all natural makeup that is going to offer a, a really clean, no makeup makeup type of look and that will be good for your skin. And it's a much more muted look than I usually use but I think that they are really nice products. So let's start out by talking about the makeup and I shot some footage earlier of me putting on this makeup so I will put this insert this footage while I'm talking about it and they don't offer all of the makeup products that I use on a daily basis so I picked out a few other products to use as well. So the first product that I'm using here is the Jones Road Brow Pencil. So on a daily basis, I really feel like I need to put on brow pencil because my eyebrows are very sparse and very light and they really disappear if I'm not wearing any brow pencil. So if I put on one thing, that is the thing that I always put on. Uh, usually if I put on a, a brow product, I need to put on both brow pencil and a brow gel, a tinted brow gel in order to get a natural look because my brows are so sparse and so light. But what I have found with the Jones Road Brow Pencil is that I can just use this pencil and not have to use a brow gel with it because it has these little fibers in the pencil. And so when I put it on my brows, it actually makes it look like there are more hairs and gives me a much more natural look than I usually get otherwise. So when I am in a hurry, then I always use this pencil. So let's talk about the skin tint. So this was the first product from typology that I purchased myself and I think this is one of the products that people have heard about the most from this company. This is supposed to have a six month shelf life and I have had this bottle for like 18 months and I think that it lasted fine for well over a year but I did notice yesterday that it seems to have oxidized some and so it is not really the right color for my skin. So what I'm going to do is just insert some footage that I took a while back when the, the foundation was still in good shape. In general, I think this is a very good foundation and I do intend to buy another bottle of it. It uh, does offer a fair amount of coverage for the skin compared to some other skin tints. There are a lot of skin tints out there that offer basically no coverage, whereas this one does offer what I would consider to be a, a true light coverage. And if I want to, I can mix it with moisturizer and thin it down a little bit. It contains a lot of squalene in it, and it has some vitamin C in it. And I think that it does feel really good on my skin. So in terms of the foundations that I have that I might wear on a regular basis, the ones that don't have silicone in them, I think that this one is really nice. I don't think it's emphasizing my wrinkles. I think it does offer me a little coverage. I think the finish of my skin when I put it on does look really pretty. There are a few other foundations that I do kind of like. Right now I kind of like the Euphoria foundation, but only if I mix it about half and half with moisturizer. Then I think that that does really well on my skin. But other than that, I'm thinking that in terms of foundations that I can wear and that don't seem like they're bad for my skin and that actually might be a little bit good for my skin, this one is right up there. Now there are only six colors of this foundation and they are pretty well distributed between light and dark as far as I can see. They're not focusing so much on undertones, at least for people with lighter skin tones. And they do have a policy that if you buy two bottles of them, that for the second bottle you can get a discount. So I think right now the discount is like 30%. So if you find that none of these foundation shades work for you, then maybe you can buy more than one bottle and get a better match. So in terms of the shade that I have, I have a type 2 Claire, which is for light skin. And I think that this has been fine for me before it oxidized. I think it, it 
is not so much coverage that I need to worry about it a lot and I think it looked very pretty on my skin. So I do think that six months is an unusually short shelf life but I again feel like my bottle was really fine for well over a year. So I'm thinking that for some of these products I'm going to insert a slide that lists all the products that are similar that are in the same category that I have tried and the ones that are in bold are ones that I have liked and have continued to use. The ones that are in italic are ones that have irritated my skin. So if you're looking for some options to the typology product that I'm discussing then you can take a look at the slide and see the ones that I have liked. Now Typology also offers a liquid concealer which comes in a little metal tube like this and I really really like this concealer a lot. So I usually just use it uh, right directly on my skin but today because I didn't have the foundation I also mixed a little bit of it with some moisturizer and with a little bit of their liquid highlighter and I use this as an overall uh, really light base for my skin and I think that it looks really pretty that way. So if you want to you could probably skip the foundation entirely and just buy some of this concealer because I do think that it's a, a very nice product and it has uh, all the same shades as the foundation does. So almost always when I have a liquid concealer in a container with a doe foot that almost always makes the wrinkles on my skin look real, much worse. But in this case this seems to be mostly a cream formula and so it, it works much better and I've not noticed at all that this is making my wrinkles look worse or causing other uh, types of textural issues on my face. And it does contain some caffeine which is depuffing. So if you have a puffiness around your eyes or maybe puffiness on other parts of your face then that should be good for that. And it also has niacinamide in it which can be good for the texture of the skin or for people that have problems with breakouts it can be helpful for that as well. And all of these makeup products seem to be perfectly fine on my skin. They don't seem to be irritating at all and they're the sorts of products that if I happen to fall asleep in them that my skin seems to do perfectly fine. I don't think that they're causing problems for me if I wear them uh, every day or if I wear them too long on one day. Now in terms of powder, Typology does offer a powder. It is called Mattifying Loose Powder and the ingredients that it has in it, it has sodium hyaluronate and sunflower seed oil, that sounds good. And then it also has zinc PCA which is supposed to be purifying and sebum regulating. So it doesn't really say on the website that someone with my typology shouldn't use this powder, but it also says in several places that it's really designed for either oily skin or combination skin. So for that reason it's not a cheap product and I feel like uh, I am a little bit hesitant to buy it when it's really not supposed to be designed for my skin and when I do have a lot of other powders in general. But if uh, I would be really interested in hearing from other people that have skin that is drier whether or not the powder has worked for them because I have had enough success with the Typology makeup products that if the powder is good and if it's appropriate for my skin then I would be interested in trying it. So since I don't have the Typology powder I chose a different powder to use and I decided to use this Mob Beauty powder just because I've been really liking the powder inside this container more and more. It still does kind of annoy me to have to uh, take this lid on and off. This is a compostable container which is great but it's really hard to get this lid on and off and I've kind of come to the conclusion that I'm just going to keep using this powder for a while and not really try to get the lid on and off and just kind of stick it on the top like this. And I feel like this powder is really nice ingredients and very finely milled and that when I put it on my skin it just disappears really quickly. So I do really like it a lot. So another product that I use almost all the time is um, some kind of a blush and Typology does not, not offer any blush so I decided to get out this new product from Fit Glow. So this is called the Fit Glow Multi-Use Ceramide Lip Plus Cheek Palette and it comes with four shades. There's, there's three different palettes so there's one that's kind of brighter colors, there's one that's kind of highlighting bronzy colors and then this one is kind of more neutral type colors. So I decided to uh, get this one out and give it a try. Fit Glow is another skincare company that also makes a few makeup products and I really do like their skincare a lot. I'm not as crazy about their makeup products but I did decide to buy this little palette. 
And this product is, I think, kind of similar to the RMS Lip Plus Cheek products. So it's basically oils and some pigments. It's pretty highly saturated, and I think that it does stay on my skin pretty well. I think that these are, are nice colors, and I do feel like when I put it on my skin, as long as I... Usually what I do is put it on, I wait a little bit, I see how it looks, maybe I put a little bit more on. And if I do that, I think it lasts pretty well, especially for a cream blush like this. So I do kind of like it. It's not cheap, but I do kind of like these colors, and I did get it on a good discount. So I think you, if you wait or you look around, you can get good discounts on Fit Glow. And so then this palette is not nearly so expensive. Now, one thing that I did notice immediately when I opened this palette is that it feel, smells quite strongly of what seemed to be like a baby powder scent to me. And I was kind of suspicious of that because they really don't have any scented ingredients listed on the ingredient list. So I wrote to them and asked them about it. And they said that the scent was from the apricot kernel oil and that they were using the full plant extract and oil, which includes stems, leaves, flower, root, and fruit, along with the oil from the pit and seeds, and that it has a light, nutty, and fruity scent. I think it's a little bit more than light. I think it's actually a, quite a strong scent, and it really smells sort of like a baby powder scent to me. But I have used it uh, for a while now, and I feel like I'm kind of getting used to the scent, which I generally don't if a scent is synthetic. And I feel like it's been okay on my face. It hasn't caused irritation. And this is supposed to be usable on the lips, so I've tried using it on the lips. I don't usually use products like this on the lips too much, but I thought that it tasted okay. I, it does have a taste to it, but I don't think it tastes like perfume. So I am fairly happy with this. I don't know that I would necessarily recommend buying it. It is a little pricey, but I do think it's performing well for me. And I think with a makeup look like this, which really is supposed to be a totally no makeup makeup look, I think that this kind of a blush goes along well with it. Now, another popular product from Typology are these glow drops. And so today I used some of these glow drops as a uh, addition to my foundation, just to give a little bit of a, a tiny little bit of a shine all over my face. And then I also put a little bit of it uh, on my cheekbones and Cupid's bow and the places that you would highlight just straight out of the bottle. And I think that of the liquid highlighters that I've tried that I really, really like this one quite a lot. I did a whole video on liquid highlighters where I tried all of a whole bunch of them on camera mixed with moisturizer and then uh, a little bit extra just to see what they would be like and this was actually one of my favorites I think it's really good for my skin it doesn't have a scent to it I think it's really pretty it's just a um, slightly shiny without being too shiny and I think that overall this is a very nice product so I do feel like there are some other liquid highlighters out there that might have more skin benefits than this one does so certainly those Dr. Barbara Stern glow drops that those are supposed to be quite good for the skin. I think the one from Lisa Eldridge might be a fairly good for the skin but uh, those tend to be much more expensive especially that Dr. Barbara Stern one whereas this one is a, a very reasonable price and I think it's a very wearable formula and I actually really enjoy using this one. And this says here also that it's supposed to have a six-month life. I've probably had this for nine months, maybe a little bit longer than that. So it probably, I will need to buy another bottle of this. And I wouldn't mind doing that at all. I really do like this product. So usually if I'm not wearing my glasses, then I do put on some kind of eyeshadow uh, really fast in a lot of cases. So in a lot of cases, what I really like are eyeshadow sticks because they don't require any kind of a primer and they go on in a couple of seconds. So today I chose this eyeshadow from Laura Mercier. Uh, this is a new matte uh, eyeshadow stick in the shade Sepia, I think it is. So I mostly chose this because I thought it would coordinate with my sweater and because I, I do like this particular line of products. And I think that they, they give the same sort of look that, for instance, the Merit shadows give, but I think that they're a lot faster and I've been kind of happier with them. 
So the most recent product that I've been trying out is the Typology Mascara. So this is a mascara that has mostly natural ingredients in it. It has pea peptides and castor oils and plant fibers. So it is supposed to be good for your lashes. And what I have found is that uh, really I have just very, very light lashes. And so they really do disappear if I'm not wearing any mascara at all. But I don't necessarily always feel like I really want to build up my lashes in terms of the length or in terms of the volume. But it does seem to be attractive. Uh, to just add a little bit of color to my lashes. And most mascaras really do add a lot of volume to them, maybe more than I like. So one thing that I have found with this particular mascara is that it seems to do a very good job of just darkening my lashes without actually putting a lot of stuff on them to make them look fake. And I think that they actually, even though I have two coats on right now, they do look fairly natural looking compared to most mascaras that I try. And this has not been irritating to my eyes at all. I think it's better than even most of the mascaras that I'm able to tolerate. And it might, don't feel like my lashes are as crunchy as usual, even with two coats on them. They, they still feel fairly soft. And I think it might be the case that this actually is good for my eyelashes. And it does go on really easily. I don't feel like it's been messy at all for me. And it comes off easily. And then finally, in terms of makeup products, one of my favorite Typology products of all, and really my favorite lip gloss of all, is the Typology Lip Oil. So this comes in a clear version, and then it comes in uh, four different colors. And I like this enough that I did decide to buy all four of these colors. And I do think they're all really pretty. So the one that I've been using the longest is this one that's just a little bit pink. And I feel like this one is a neutral enough color that I even just wear it like right before bed. It doesn't seem to cause any issues. And then I have several other colors here. I have the one that's called uh, Plum Purple, which is sort of a black honey type of a color that you can see your lips through. I have one that's a pretty bright coral, and this one actually does look fairly bright on the lips. And then I have the one that I am wearing today, which is Ruby Red, which I think, you know, for me, as someone that doesn't always feel entirely comfortable in a red lipstick, but kind of likes a, a little bit of that uh, idea of wearing a red lipstick that this is actually a really nice product and that it gives me just a hint that I'm wearing a red lip. And so the main ingredients in this product are apricot kernel oil, jojoba oil, plum seed oil. I really do like plum seed oil a lot. And then it has squalene in it. And in terms of the taste of it, it does taste a little bit sweet, which seems to just be because of the stevia. I am not necessarily a big fan of stevia, but in this case, I think that these taste really um, very nice to me. The, the sweetness is not too pronounced and it's really just pleasant. And I do feel like this product is really good for my lips. Now it comes in these little bottles that are like nail polish bottles. And so if I want to put something in my tiny little purse, this is a little bit on the large side for that. But they are giving you a considerably uh, larger amount of products than really uh, almost any lip uh, gloss that I have seen on the market. And I have but had this one bottle and used it really regularly for quite a long period of time and there's still some left in it. So I do think that it's a fairly good price for the amount of product that you get and uh, I think that it's, it's uh, fairly convenient. I definitely don't like putting on lip products with my fingers, but I think that this little doe foot is very nice and puts on an appropriate amount of product without my lips feeling like they're all covered with a lot of goo. So I think these have been highly overlooked in the marketplace. And I, if you buy anything from Typology at all, I would definitely throw in one of these lip uh, glosses because people really do seem to like them. And I do really, really like these a lot. I feel like the lip oils are a pretty good treatment in and of themselves, but I also have this uh, lip balm that has uh, a variety of ingredients in it that I have also tried. And this one also seems fine for my lips. So sometimes I have used this as well.
So now let's move into skin care and we will start off by talking about moisturizers. So one of the products from them that I have liked the most is called their Nourishing Moisturizer. So I've used up almost this whole tube of this and I do really like it very, very much. And then I actually have purchased this one. So there haven't been many Typology products that I have repurchased, but I definitely like this one enough to have purchased a second tube. And this is a moisturizer that uh, I really like, I think in large part because it has plum kernel oil in it, so it smells somewhat like almonds, which I find to be appealing, and I think that, that my skin does really seem to like the plum kernel oil. Um, and then it also has squalene, olive oil, the sodium hyaluronate in it, some shea butter, and sunflower seed oil. And the squalene in this product is derived from olives. Now the alternative is generally that you have uh, genetically engineered bacteria that are fermenting uh, sugarcane, and I don't know if I feel okay about that or not, but I think that the olives tend to be a, a little bit uh, less worrisome to me, so I feel good about that. And I think that this combination of ingredients with the higher quality oils and the sodium hyaluronate and some squalene in it, that that is a really good combination for my skin and that my skin really does like it a lot. Now, I think that this is very similar to a moisturizer that's offered by Beauty Counter that is in their countermatch line and that they are also using the plum kernel oil in that. That is a little bit more expensive uh, when it comes to the regular price for Beauty Counter. Now, Beauty Counter does have some sales. And really, I only buy Beauty Counter products when things are on sale. So when I do that, the product is somewhat equivalent. This is still a little bit better price. But I do like this a lot. I think that it's okay that it comes in this tube. It's a little bit less convenient for me than uh, just pumping it out of the bottle because I have to remove this cap and squirt it out and then put the cap back on. So that's a little bit more of a process in the morning if I'm using it then. But I do think that this is a, a really nice product. I think that it's a very good quality in terms of the ingredients and it seems to have stayed fresh for uh, the year or so that I had that first tube and I've been really really happy with it. And I certainly prefer this tube than having a jar that I need to make sure that my hands are clean uh, because I feel like that's a, a, a lot more sanitary. Now Typology offers another moisturizer that might be appropriate for skin like mine. Uh, this is called the nine ingredient a face cream and this is based on coconut oil so it has sodium hyaluronate in it but the main moisturizer in this is coconut oil and I don't think that my skin does terribly with coconut oil but I'm not really that crazy about it either so I just got this as a little sample and I did try it out maybe I will use this as a hand cream or a, a body cream but in general I think that the oils in the other product are much better quality and I also think that the price is really not that much higher for that other product. So now let's move on to serums and I will start out with their hyaluronic acid serum which I have used quite frequently. So I actually use hyaluronic acid serums every day and I find that those are really important in terms of keeping my skin in good shape. And so the one that they offer has hyaluronic acid and panthenol in them. Uh, there are a lot of other really good hyaluronic acid uh, formulas on the market. Most of them are working okay for me. They don't usually have any scents in them and they usually seem to be fine for my skin. Uh, this one has also been perfectly fine, but I do feel like it's a little bit on the pricey side compared to some of the other serums that I have used. It's actually almost as expensive as the Drunk Elephant one, which is a line that tends to have a, a some okay products for my skin, but that really does tend to be uh, quite pricey. And I think that this one is pretty pricey too. Uh, what I usually like, uh, I really like the Honest Hyaluronic Acid uh, Stay Hydrated Serum. I think that that one is uh, a really good product. It actually may be my favorite uh, price notwithstanding and it also is a very uh, inexpensive price compared to some of these. And I also really like the Beauty Counter Countermatch Serum and I like the Alpine Beauty one. So I'm not convinced that I need to rebuy this one rather than something else, but I will certainly use up the rest of this bottle. And I have a little trial size bottle that I will use up and then we'll see if I ever buy it again. But it is a good product. 
And the next product is the Typology Nine Ingredients Soothing Serum. So this is a product that has beta-glucan in it and supposedly that helps the skin barrier and therefore helps the skin to become more resistant to products that might irritate it. And I think that this has been fine for me. It certainly hasn't irritated my skin, but whether or not it actually was helpful, I'm not so sure. I used it on a regular basis along with the rest of the Typology products and I thought that it was fine, but but I'm not sure that I would repurchase it again. And based on kind of my sense from the website, I kind of feel like this might be one of those products that they introduce, see how it does, and then it disappears. So we'll see if we keep seeing it on the website. So one of the products that seems to be more popular on Typology is their vitamin C serum, which they're calling the Typology Radiant Serum. Uh, this has a form of vitamin C in it that is called sodium asorbyl phosphate. My own experience with vitamin C serums is that if they have ascorbic acid in them, they are so irritating to my skin that I really cannot tolerate them at all. And if they don't have ascorbic acid in them, then I have used uh, several of them for quite a long period of time, and I'm not convinced that they're doing anything at all for my skin. But it also is the case that I don't have a lot of hyperpigmentation on my skin, and that I live in an area that is low in pollution, and that I do have a lot of antioxidants in my diet. So it may just be that I don't really need to be using a vitamin C serum, or it may be that these vitamin C serums that I'm using really don't do that much for the skin. I'm not really sure of the answer to that. But it also is the case that with this particular product, I'm not sure I gave it a big chance. I've not used it every day for months on end. So it's possible if I used it for a longer period of time that it might be doing something. But when I've done that with other vitamin C serums, I don't feel like they've done really anything for my skin at all. Now, the next product that I have here is supposed to be a uh, directed towards addressing wrinkles, and it has collagen and vitamin C in it. Now, whether or not collagen actually is helpful with wrinkles more than most other skincare, I'm not so sure. My understanding of this is that collagen is mostly acting like a moisturizer or a hydrator on the skin. And I feel like this is a nice product when I put it on my skin, so probably I'll continue to use up the rest of this bottle. But I do feel like it's pretty pricey, and I'm not sure if it's really doing anything for my wrinkles, I guess I would have to do a side-by-side uh, -side test and just use it on one side of my face. But I kind of feel like this is a product that uh, is okay, but I don't feel really inclined to repurchase it probably. And then this next product is promoted as an eye serum, and it has caffeine in it and niacinamide, and it has some licorice in it, which might be uh, helpful in terms of reducing sensitivity of the skin. I am not real crazy about putting a serum on my eyes because I feel like my eyes really need moisture as well as uh, hydration. And so I would rather have the products that I put on my eyes be a cream. And I very well might uh, continue to use this product up on my face in general. Caffeine is depuffing, and I do feel like my face is a little bit puffy. It has niacinamide in it. I don't feel like niacinamide has been all that helpful for me as an ingredient, but it doesn't seem to be bad, at least at lower concentrations. So I think this is one of those serums that, uh, it's not hurting, but I'm not sure that this is my favorite serum, and I certainly wouldn't rebuy it, and I might pass this one along to someone else. So the next product that I have here is a toner, and it has glycolic acid in it, and the glycolic acid is at 8%, so it's fairly strong. Now, one thing to know about typology is that they think that if you have sensitive skin, then you should not be using retinols on it, and you should not be using hydroxy acids that are very strong, because they think that that is just irritating. And I'm pretty much totally in agreement with that. And I don't think that uh, doing anything at all to irritate my skin, even if it's supposed to be in the name of reducing wrinkles is a good idea at all. So I would generally not use a product like this, and I certainly wouldn't have bought it, but I got it as uh, in a sample kit, so I decided to give it a try on occasion. Uh, what happens is that sometimes I get little pimples like here, and if I do, then uh, this will clear it right up if I just put a tiny little bit of it on one time. 
So I think that this could be a really good product for someone that does have a lot of skin issues that respond well to hydroxy acids. And I will just keep this little bottle of toner around, but as you can see, I've used virtually none of it and I don't anticipate using very much of it in the future. But I, I do feel like that my skin has not reacted negatively to this product. It hasn't caused it irritation. It, it hasn't had an allergic type reaction to it. So I think that if this is a suitable for your skin type, it might be worth trying. So the next product is a growth serum that is supposed to be helpful for eyebrows and for eyelashes. And so I have only tried this a few times so far. I don't think it's been irritating at all. The main ingredients in this are pea protein and castor oil. So it's kind of like that mascara, but without the, the uh, tint in it. So I think that my eyebrows and eyelashes do tolerate this okay. It doesn't seem to be irritating. I haven't really tried it out enough to know if it's going to be helpful or not. I'm a little suspicious about that. But I do think that uh, both my eyelashes and my eyebrows are scanty enough that it might be worth a try. So I might do an experiment where I use this on one side of my face and then just leave the other side uh, untreated to see what happens. The other thing that I would uh, comment is that a lot of these eyebrow growth serum products, they do have a lot of ingredients in them that are, seem like they're kind of problematic or they tend to be quite expensive. But when I've actually seen experiments that have been done, people seem to think that something that's just castor oil seems to work just as well as the ones with all the other stuff in them. So I think that probably if anything is going to work, that this would probably work fine. And it is in a uh, bottle that's convenient and it has the little spoolie on the end of it. So it's pretty easy for me to use. So if I get a little bit motivated or a little bit bored this winter, maybe I would do that experiment and see how it works out. So now let's talk about face oils. And one thing that I will say is that it does seem like there have been a lot of face oils from Typology that I've tried out and that have seemed okay. And now they are not on the market anymore. So face oils are not necessarily really popular among other people. And for the most part, I am finding that if I want face oils, that the, by far the most economical way to obtain them is to go to a company like Eden Botanicals and to buy their carrier oils because they tend to be organic. They tend to be oils that are very, very high quality and that tend to be really, really expensive if I buy them from uh, companies that sell through Credo or Sephora, but that when I buy them from the essential oil companies, they, they tend to be just as good a quality and to work just as well for me. But there are still a few face oils that are on the market from Typology that I do think are worth considering and that I might actually buy again myself. So the first one is the Typology Firming Botanical Blend. So this is quite pricey. It's $75 for an ounce or $46 for half an ounce. And the ingredients in this are squalane, a prickly pear oil, which is supposed to be good for wrinkles, and also some uh, essential oils, hibiscus oil, lavender oil, and helichrysum oil, and then sunflower oil and soybean oil. And then it also has prickly pear stem extract in it, and that they are saying that that is a concentrated form of prickly pear that is supposed to be especially good for wrinkles. So first of all, this does have a lot of essential oils in it, and they are not essential oils that are necessarily thought to be particularly problematic by EWG, and they're not essential oils that I have had particular problems with in the past, and my skin does seem to be able to tolerate this fine. I did read quite a few user reviews that from people that say that their skin wasn't able to tolerate this, so I think if your skin is very, very sensitive, that it probably would be a good idea to skip this one. And I think that even for people like me, I, I started out with a small bottle and then this is the second one that I've purchased. But I do think that my skin likes this. Now, whether or not it's actually helping with wrinkles, I'm not so sure. I am using uh, quite a few different things for uh, that are supposed to be helpful for, with wrinkles, and so it's hard to know which ones are the most helpful unless I really do a controlled test. But I think that especially since this is a scented oil, my skin does really do well with it. And so I certainly will, I think I will finish off this bottle and I might buy it again in the future. And then the other product that, from them that I kind of like is called a bakuchiol oil. And they are claiming that this is supposed to be for people who have skin breakouts. 
and I can kind of see that. So it has bacuchiol in it, which is supposed to be similar to retinol, but a plant-based version. And it's not supposed to be, make your skin more sensitive to the sun. It's not supposed to irritate the skin. And I have found that I do perfectly fine with this oil. So I certainly have heard before that bacuchiol is supposed to be helpful for wrinkles as well as for breakouts. And I, I think that my skin is at least tolerating it perfectly fine. Again, it's hard to know whether or not things are helping for wrinkles, but there is a quite a bit of literature that suggests that this can be helpful for wrinkles. And it is in uh, coconut derivative oil as well as in hazelnut oil. And I guess hazelnut oil is an oil that's not supposed to be irritating to people who have oilier skin, but I think it works perfectly fine on my skin. My skin doesn't seem to mind having this kind of oil on it. And so as a way to get bacuchiol onto my skin in a way that doesn't have a lot of ingredients in it that are likely to annoy it, that doesn't have any preservatives in it, that doesn't have a lot of extra stuff that I'm questioning, I think that this is one of the best products that I've found on the market. And so I certainly think that I will continue to use up this bottle. And I think that if it's still on the market, when I do use it up, I might buy it from Typology again, because I think that uh, Bacuchio seems to be a well-studied enough product that it's worth taking a chance on and putting a little bit of money into. So now let's talk about cleansers. And Typology is offering the two-step cleansing process. So they are offering a oil-based cleanser to remove makeup, and then they are suggesting that you follow it with a creamy cleanser to remove the re residuals of that oil and any other kind of uh, issues that you might have on your skin. And then if you're not wearing makeup, then you can just use a cleanser like this. So to start out with, I've become a little bit impatient with these kinds of cleansers, and I have moved uh, when I'm wearing a heavier makeup that requires some kind of a makeup remover, then I will either use the Lisa Eldridge cleanser or I will use the pharmacy cleanser, and I like the ones that are flavored like fruits, so strawberries or apples or any of the other kind of fruit ones. And those do not have essential oils in them, but they do seem to be able to be used on my face, and I can just put them on, I'll leave them on for a minute or so, rinse them off, and then not need to do a second cleanse. So that's what I mostly favor for my face. But if I were going to use on a regular basis an oil-based cleanser, then I think that this one is actually quite good. It has very high quality oils in it. Uh, the oils that are in it are sweet almond oil, uh, caprylic oil, which is like a coconut derivative usually, and sunflower seed oil, and there's no fragrance type ingredients in it. There's no ingredients in it that I consider to be uh, suspicious or that I think are likely to irritate my skin. And when I have used it on my face, my face does fine with it. Now what I actually mostly use this for, or what I've mostly been using this for, is for uh, removing swatches. Like if I put lipstick swatches on my arm, then I will use this to get it off, and that works quite well for that also. But I think that if you are looking for a cleanser uh, that is a, an oil-based makeup remover that this is one of the best on the markets if you want something that's really clean and really high quality. And then this cleansing milk, I was a little suspicious about this. It includes an ingredient that's called sodium lauroyl sarcosinate, uh, which is a a foaming agent that has a really, really mild foam that uh, removes uh, of things from the skin. So it's not the same at all as SLS. That is a totally different ingredient that is much more irritating to the skin. And I seem to have done okay with this. I don't know that this is my favorite cleanser. I think there's quite a few more that are out there that I, I like somewhat more. I really kind of like the Mad Hippie one more, for instance. I really like the um, Evan Healy, the un the one without any essential oils in it. I think it's called Simply Basic, something like that. And the Aveda All Sensitive Cleanser, that's a cream, I like that one. And I even really like the Outset one, the Micellar Gel Cleanser for the summer months. But I like this more than I thought I was going to, and I've used up maybe this much of the bottle so far, so I'm gonna keep it in my bathroom for a while. I might eventually send it on to someone else, but this seems to be okay so far, better than I had anticipated. So the next product is one that I've just been trying for a couple weeks. 
And this is called the Typology Lipid Replenishing Balm. So it comes in quite a large container. And they are claiming that you can use it either on your face or on your body. And so the main ingredients in this are shea butter, ceramides, uh, two types of fermented ingredients. And this is the first product from Typology that I have tried that actually does have fermented ingredients in it. So that is a plus. And it has camelina sativa oil, but it also has carrageenan in it. And that kind of makes me a little suspicious. So carrageenan is a seaweed and it is known to be pretty bad for the intestinal tract, possibly because it's an emulsifier. And then I also wonder about the potential of it being contaminated with cyanotoxins because it is from the sea. And when I have tried things with carrageenan and in terms of eating them, I don't feel like those are good products for me to be eating. And so I really wonder if it might be having negative effects on the skin as well. But I have been trying this from time to time, most on my hands so far and I don't feel like my hands are crazy about it I don't think it's really caused a reaction so far but I kind of feel like I'm about ready to give up on it and this is one of the few products from Typology that I'm just not sure is really a great product for me and I suspect that that is why I may continue with it for a little bit longer but I tend to think that I probably will pass this on and see if uh, the friend that I usually share this, this the, my discarded products from to see if she likes it any better than I do but in any case I tried this on my face I definitely don't like, like it on my face I think that it might be okay on my body. Uh, my hands don't seem to be in worse shape since I started using it, but I, I do think that there are hand lotions out there that I, I feel much more comfortable with and that I think are better for my hands. And then I also have this hand lotion from Typology, which is called 10 Ingredient Hand Lotion. This is almost exactly the same as that uh, nine ingredient face product. So it has mostly coconut oil as the moisturizing ingredient in it. It does have some uh, hyaluronic acid, I think. But in general, I just don't think that this is um, that great of a product because my, I don't feel like even on my hands that I really prefer to use coconut oil. I think that shea butter is a much better choice for my hands. And then the last product from Typology that I have tried is their Typology Hand and Nail Serum. So this is supposed to be a keratin treatment. I guess the hydrolyzed wheat protein is the keratin. And then it also has biotin, panthenol, and sodium hyaluronate in it. And I do have very, very weak nails. They do break off. So I do feel like probably between the weak nails and the fact that I don't have too many eyebrows or eyelashes and that my hair tends to be pretty weak, that I probably am missing something in my diet. So I might try to fix that uh, if I can figure out what ingredient that might be. But in any case, I, I did spend some time looking at serums that might be helpful to the nails. Uh, without my putting any nail polish or anything like that on. I definitely don't want to do that. And I did find that most of the nail serums that are out there, they do include perfumes or ingredients that seem like they would be really bad for me. And then I did have a very hard time finding anything out on the market that I thought would be a good product, except that this one I think actually has been fine. So it, at the very least, it doesn't have scent in it. It doesn't seem to be irritating my fingers. It comes with a dropper, which I think is a little bit odd. I think I would rather have something that I just painted directly on my nails rather than that was gonna be going on the skin all over my nails. But in general, I don't think that this has been bad for my nails at all. And I think this might be something that I should actually try on one hand like every day for a month, something like that to see if it really makes a difference. But I do think that maybe I could get some use out of this and I do still have some hopes for that. So I'm going to do some more experiments with it. But in any case, it hasn't been irritating and I'm happy to find a product that has clean ingredients that is, that is in this category at the very least. And then there are a few products from Typology that I might be interested in, but that I haven't tried yet or that I have decided not to try for particular reasons. So I will go through those fairly quickly. So the first one is Typology Olive Squalane Oil. Now, I do like plain squalane oil as an addition to my facial routine, and this is not an oil that I can get from the essential oil companies like Eden Botanicals. So I usually use 
a product from a company that is called Indie Lee, and I have a couple bottles of that still, so I haven't bought this from Typology, and probably by the time I actually buy it from Typology, they won't be selling it anymore. But they, this one is from Olives, the same as the Indie Lee version, and it's about the same price so far as the Indie Lee version. So I think that that is a potential uh, source if you're looking for a squalane oil or would be open to one. I do think that squalane oil is quite nice for the skin, and especially if you're uh, not looking for something that's too greasy, that one can be very uh, well penetrating and not cause any problems with uh, too much oil on the skin. Typology has a new eye cream out, and in a way that sounds like it could be good because it has that prickly pear extract in it, and there is some evidence that that might be helpful with wrinkles, and it also has CoQ10 in it, and possibly that could be good, but it also lists linalool as an ingredient, and I think that that's very peculiar because I generally in most of the eye creams that I have used, they don't include any kind of essential oils or processed natural fragrance in them. And I don't think that they should. I think that the eyes, my eyes especially, tend to be very sensitive. And, and most people's eyes are very sensitive. So probably I won't be buying that one. There's also a firming night mask, which seems to be quite similar to this firming oil that I used. It has a lot of the same ingredients in it, including the prickly pear. It has shea butter and aloe vera. But then it also has a whole bunch of essential oils in it, including ones that are um, even more problematic. So it has the helichrysum and the lavender like this, and then it also lists limonene, geraniol, and linalool. And I'm not sure that those are just listed because they're in the essential oils. It looks to me like they're actually adding those. And I might try it anyway, except there are a whole lot of reviews from people with sensitive skin that were not able to tolerate this and who said that it was really, really bad for their skin. And when I did a filter for people that listed sensitive skin, pretty much everybody said this was not a good product for them. And then Typology also has a Radiance Night Serum. And that one is supposed to be helpful for dull or tired skin, and it has rose native cells in it, which could be good. That one has rose geranium oil in it, so I am not interested in it for that reason because I'm just plain allergic to rose geranium oil. Now, in terms of serums, they have a plumping serum that, again, has carrageenan in it, so that is the main reason that I did not get that one yet. It also has something in it that is called polyglutamic acid, which is supposed to be especially hydrating, such as even more hydrating than hyaluronic acid. So I'm a little bit interested in it for that reason. Uh, there are some other companies, though, like Verst, that also use that ingredient. So I think I might be better off looking around and finding a, that ingredient in other products because I just am not sure that carrageenan is a good ingredient for me. They also have a hyperpigmentation serum uh, with tranexamic acid and acetyl tetrapeptide 2 in it. I don't feel like hyperpigmentation is a big issue for me, so I haven't... Uh, bought many products from Typology that focus on that, but if that is an issue, then that could be something that's worth considering. And they have an antioxidant serum that has ferulic acid in it, but it also has lavender oil and linalool in it, so that makes me feel like uh, I probably don't really need to try that, especially since I'm not sure that antioxidant serums are that helpful for me. And they do have two brand new products, that a lip mask and a resurfacing lip peel. And I think that both of those might be worth trying. They both look perfectly fine in terms of the ingredients to me. So I might try that. And then in terms of cleansers, they have an eye makeup removal that uh, I just usually don't use eye makeup removers. I just tend to feel uh, like just using a regular cleanser should be taking off the amount of eye makeup that I have on. They have an exfoliating cleansing gel that they tend to suggest uh, whenever I put in there that I might be exposed to a lot of pollution. That's what they tend to suggest then. So I guess it's better at removing grime from your skin. But that one has orange oil, limonene, and benzyl alcohol in it, so I really don't want that in my cleanser. 
And then they have a seven ingredient micellar water. And I'm not usually a big fan of micellar products, although I, I do like the one that is from the outset. This one has a Polaxamer 184 in it. That one is also in a Glossier product that I tried that didn't really irritate my skin, but I didn't really like it that much. So I'm not all that inclined to buy this one either. So thank you very much for watching all the way to the end of the video. And if you have tried out any typology products, then please let me know what they have been like for you and if you would buy them again. In addition, if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, then please go ahead and do that because I am just uh, right on the verge of getting to a thousand subscribers. So I am uh, kind of excited about that. And thank you very much for watching and Coco and I love you very much. So goodbye. Da 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 da